good to see you all today. My name is uh, Jessica Kim, Reverend Jess, and this is my couch. And um, this is our Midweek Matter moment. A Midweek Matter moment um, is going to come uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses uh, 10 and 11, and then verse 16 and 17. So let me read that for you, okay? This is what the word of uh, God says. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks be unto God. Grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. I really like this passage of scripture. Um, I like it because Paul is talking about leadership. And right now, I don't know about you, but I am in need of good, strong leadership. There's a term um, that we often use uh, amongst the staff at Antioch called look to the leader. And it's based uh, off of uh, something that was said by about is, is actually what was said um, by our uh, late beloved pastor, um, Reverend John Joseph Rector Sr. He talked about Antioch being a leader. And uh, and it's not about, you know, us being greater than someone else, but us understanding that we are called uh, not to follow the culture, but to lead it. Um, that as God's people um, in the community in which we serve, we are called to be leaders uh, within it. And that extends beyond the east side of San Antonio, Walter Street, San Antonio itself. Texas and our nation and everything that we do, we are called to step away from culture and follow the leader. Now, here's the thing. In order to look to the leader, we first have to identify who the leader is. Listen, family, it can be really hard trying to see who the leader is during a pandemic much less any other trials you may be facing in your life. It can be hard to identify good, strong leadership because it often seems like no matter what is going on, we find ourselves having to deal with the reality that everyone cannot be trusted to be a good leader. But Paul says something interesting. Uh, while the people of Corinth are trying to decide should they be listening to Paul or should they be listening to Apollos, this other guy, he tells them that their leader is actually the strong foundation that was laid for them. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. And that's encouraging to me today because I sometimes forget that my real leader is Jesus Christ. Amidst all of the news outlets, amidst uh, all of the <laughs> internet articles and stuff that pops up on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, the leader that I am called to follow is Jesus Christ. I'm called to follow him. And in following Christ, I'm following the one who has the beginning and the ending of every one of my life's trials in the palm of his hand. So we're called to uh, identify our leadership. But then also, uh, we are called not only to identify our leadership, but to internalize uh, the message of our leader. Look, um, you can't get through anything in life uh, any kind of trial if you don't have some parameters 
<laughs> uh, if you don't have some guidelines in front of you. Look, I, a few weeks ago, I, I was trying to put together a piece of furniture um, that was at my house. And I was trying to piece it together, you know, just based on looking at it. But it wasn't until I looked at the instructions that I realized that, there, that certain pieces were only supposed to go in certain places. And while it may look the same, it really isn't the same. Have you ever had that experience? Look, we have to take the instructions of our leader and internalize them. Paul was talking about how there would be other people that come behind him to build on the foundation that was laid by him. This foundation of Christ that was laid was going to be built on by somebody else. But here's the thing, family. You cannot be trusted to build uh, in Christ's church unless you internalize Christ's message. Look at what look at what Paul says. Paul talks about how there's going to be a, 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 the, some people will come and build with wood or straw or hay, but the testing of their building comes when the fire shows up. And if the fire destroys what they've been built, then we know that they're not true builders of Christ. I don't know about you, but I know that the Lord has mandated me to go out and build. And when I go out and build, I'm building based on what I have internalized, what I have been taught, the instructions that have been given to me. Where are these instructions? <laughs> Sometimes I wish every one of our trials showed up <laughs> with, a, with a manufacturer's manual uh, like my piece of furniture did that told me how to get through each and every step of my trial. But I believe that Christ gives us the Bible as a place to go to find instruction for the next step of our journey. It may not have every uh, uh, instance exactly as your life is setting up in the word, but there's something in that Bible that'll help you get through life's trials. There's something in that Bible that'll help you pray, that'll help you praise, that'll help you fast, that'll help you stick through the tough times in life. But in order to do that, we have to open it, we have to read it, and we have to internalize the message of our leader. And finally, family, while we have identified our leadership and we've internalized our leader's message, we have a mandate to implement our leader's mission. That's what uh, Paul is talking about in verses 16 and 17. Paul says, do you not know that you are God's temple and that the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you? <laughs> Man, I love it when Paul asks us questions because it causes me to reflect. Do I live my life as God's temple? And look, Sometimes we can look at this text and we think that it's only about us individually. But here in chapter three, he's not talking, Paul's not talking like he's talking in chapter six. The temple in chapter six is a personal temple, but the temple in chapter three is the church universal. And when he says you, it's actually plural, which means Paul is saying church of Corinth, all of you, who make up this body of believers, you are the temple, which says something important to me about our time today. It's difficult to spend time away from the sanctuary. It's been hard for me. I'm a church baby. I'm a church kid. I love to be in the house of worship. But as much as I love to be in the house of worship, I understand that the church is not limited uh, to brick facades, cushion pews, elevated pulpits, and stained glass windows. The church, I really mean the church, is found in you and me. We are the church. We are the ones who are called to carry out the mission of Christ. 
And that is not confined to 1001 North Walter Street and our beautiful building. No, the church of God, you and I, we are, we are the ones who carry out the mandate. Wherever we are planted, there's this picture, uh, this, uh, this phrase uh, that, that says, bloom where you're planted. And I want to encourage that in you today, to bloom where you're planted. Right now, you may be planted in your home. I want you to bloom there. I want you to exhibit the, the joy of Jesus and the peace of Christ in your home. Spend time with the Lord. Model it to your children. Share it with your friends. Bloom where you're planted. You may be planted uh, and only be able to, to, to communicate via social media. This is a perfect time for you uh, to, to give an uplifting word to your social media followers, your sphere of influence, uh, uh, to write an encouraging post, to, to share uh, your worship services with someone virtually. This is a time for you to be the church where you are. Be the church where you're planted, you know? Minister to God's people. Uh, in the ways that we can hear. You know, be kind to your neighbors. Maybe send a card note to a family member that's outside of your city or outside of your state. But we can still be the church. We just have to do it in a new way for right now. Listen, family, we have a strong foundation and it's Jesus Christ. He is our leader. And we have to be able to identify him. We do that. When we do that, we have to internalize his message, which means we have to develop our relationship with Christ. And I don't know about you, but this pandemic has been <laughs> developing my relationship with God. But then also, also, we have to implement the mission evangelism and sharing the word of God uh, is not quarantined. <laughs> it's not quarantined. We still have the opportunity to share the love and message of Christ. So I want to encourage you today um, to look to the leader because I believe that our leader is going to get us through this. I love you all. I'm praying for you. And I'm looking forward to the day when I get to see you in the sanctuary again. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Be blessed. Bye.